The first time you open up Maya, you might be a little overwhelmed by all of the icons and menu options that are scattered across the screen. But once you become familiar with Maya's interface design, getting around in Maya becomes a lot simpler. Let's take a look at the various sections of the user interface, or UI. Running across the top of the screen, you'll see Maya's main menu. Through a series of drop-down menus, you can gain access to every common menu Maya has to offer. The commands on the upper left are always visible to you, whether you're focusing on modeling, texturing, animation, or other aspects of 3D production. These six basic menu options allow you to open and import files, create basic 3D shapes, activate important modification tools, and access additional display windows. The remaining drop-down menus along the upper right portion of the screen will give you access to menus specifically related to the tasks you are focusing on in Maya. Just below the main menu, you'll find a section called the Status Line Toolbar. This section allows you to specify which 3D task you want to focus on in Maya. The drop-down menu on the far left allows you to activate a specific module or set of commands. Maya LT includes modeling, rigging, animation, and shading modules, and the student and professional versions of Maya also include additional modules. You'll notice that whenever a new module is selected, many items in the main menu update to show module-specific commands. For example, when we're working in the modeling module, we'll have access to mesh and curve tools. But if we were to switch to the animation module, we'd see a list of animation-specific tools, such as these commands that relate to animation keyframes and playback settings. But in this course, we will only be working within the modeling module, so you don't need to worry about any of these other areas of Maya for the time being. To the right of the module drop-down menu, you'll see a few icons that give the user easy access to file commands, opening and saving scenes, for example, as well as selection and snapping tools that will allow us to precisely move and shape geometry within our scene. Beneath the status line toolbar, you'll find a section of shelves. These are just icons that give you easy access to common commands. The shelf commands are organized into different tabs, but all the commands found in the shelves can also be found up in the main menu above. The intuitive shelf icons just offer easy access to tools. Like the modules, the shelf tabs organize commands based on different categories, and in this course, we'll only be working within tools found in the Polygons tab. I'll click on this cylinder icon to add a primitive object to our scene. This will give us something to look at as we begin working with cameras. Under the shelves, you'll find the camera viewport, which displays the objects within the 3D scene. The first time you open Maya, you may just see a single perspective view, but tapping on the space bar with the mouse over this view will bring up three additional cameras, the top, front, and side view. These cameras are orthographic, which means that they display scene elements without perspective and are therefore especially useful for accurately gauging a model's size and proportions. Across the top edge of each of these camera views, you'll see additional camera-specific menus that allow you to modify display settings. Moving the mouse over any of the camera viewports and tapping the spacebar again will maximize the window to full size. So by positioning the mouse and using the spacebar, you can easily switch views as needed. Holding down the spacebar also displays Maya's various menu items at the location of the mouse cursor. As you become more familiar with Maya's commands, you can make use of this shortcut, known as a marking menu, to access menu items rather than moving the mouse to specific regions of the screen. Different window arrangements can also be specified by clicking on the icons along the lower left side of the Maya UI. These quick layout buttons will also reveal additional windows useful for animation, scene organization, and material creation. Just above the quick layout buttons on the left side of the screen, you'll find the Maya toolbox, which includes tools for selecting, translating, rotating, and scaling scene elements. And Maya includes an extensive set of hotkeys, which allow even quicker access to many of these tools. On the far right, you'll find the channel box and attribute editor. This is the section in Maya where you'll be able to view and edit specific details about objects you've created within your scene. For example, if I click on the cylinder I created a moment ago, the channel box will display information about where that object is positioned in 3D space. Animators pay special attention to the channel box as they pose characters and set keyframes. Beneath the channel box is the layer section of Maya, which allows us to lock and hide elements within our scene. We won't need to work with layers much for this project since we'll be building a relatively simple object 
but layers can definitely be helpful for managing larger scenes. Just beneath the camera viewports, you'll see an animation timeline used for adding motion to a scene. And beneath the timeline is a section that allows users to enter commands using the Maya scripting language. We won't be working with animation or scripting in this course either, but it's good to have a sense of how the Maya UI is organized from the start so that it doesn't feel so intimidating as you begin developing your 3D skills.